Okay, so for week 11 of winter anime, the season's almost finished. We had some good wrap-ups this week. Besides that, yeah, I can't wait for next week as we're getting ready for spring anime. But overall, yeah, a lot of good finales. A lot of the shows do have like 13 episodes, a bit more. So yeah, we have to wait one more week. But yeah, free run finished up. Cannot uh, believe this finale. This anime is so good. One of my favorites in the past few years. A lot of these other shows finished up. Chain Soldier. So it's going to be a season two. So many new announcements. Undead Unluck. We had a solid finale. Uh, Sound of Affection. I kind of want to talk about it because yeah, I really hated this anime. But I mean, it was still a bit cute. Besides that, yeah, we have a lot more cool wrap-ups. I'm going to have a tier list next week, ranking up all the winter animes, because, you know, everyone loves tier lists. So, yeah, let's start off with Free Run Beyond Journey's End. We have episode 28. So, 28 episodes. This anime is so good. I cannot believe it. It consistently brought a good story, cool, funny characters, a good situation, realistic fantasy type of environment. And it was just fun seeing where things went. So here it's like the final exam. We saw a lot of people failed because Sari, she's like the little war elf. And she's like, yeah, the humans of this era are too peaceful. They're weird. I'm not going to pass any of them. So she fails the majority of the exam takers, but she passes Fern. So we saw last time, yeah, Fern won, but that's not it. There's more people passing. So all the main characters kind of with like a quirky personality, they all pass. So Denken, he's like the old man. I was so glad to see him pass because, you know, he did deserve it. He had some goals he wanted to accomplish up north and he's really old. So this is kind of like one of his last chances. And Free Run did help him out. So he's appreciative of that. Just because you're old doesn't mean your ambition is gone. Also, after that, all of the psycho people, Ubel, got chosen as well. The white haired dude that killed a lot of people up north, he got chosen. We see the dude with the clones also got chosen because his real body is like not even here. So she passed him because of the sheer audacity. It also, it was like funny Ubel wasn't able to tell. And I think the hypnotism girl, the really hot girl, she also passed. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice seeing all these characters come through. Sari does have like a rational side. She doesn't hate all humans. She's just like a bit tsundere. So her first apprentice, Flamme, definitely left an impression on her. But yeah, besides that, everyone else succeeded. So the next day, they're kind of waiting to get their like magic spell. So everyone has an access to a free spell. I'm like, yeah, you know, this anime, it's not going to be anything game changing. It's going to be like a comedic type of spell. So yeah, Fern takes her spell that like helps you do the laundry. So I guess her clothes will instantly get clean. It's pretty useful when you're like out in the wild surviving in like this fantasy environment, but it's kind of like a waste, I guess. But yeah, free run's like, yo, good choice. So we don't really know what everyone else took as their spell, but yeah, while Fern was picking, we saw one of Sari's students. He's like a really old man that feels inferior. So everyone remembers number one, they don't remember number two. So he, he decides to just fight Free Run out of nowhere, just out of pocket in the middle of the street. Kind of like blasts her with like all these like magical spells. I mean, Free Run obviously doesn't die, but then she doesn't really fight back. And then she tells him about Sari that kind of like makes him feel better. Where Sari remembers all of her students. Just because she acts a bit spoiled, she acts like she hates everybody or doesn't remember them. Or is disappointed in them. She actually like loves all of them. So I mean, that's great. He kind of like stands down. And he also admits that us war magicians were a bit awkward. <laughs> so we don't really know how to communicate well. The only thing we know is how to throw hands. So yeah, Free Run kind of diffuses the situation. That was like a bit out of nowhere. But good character moment there. It, it tells us more about Sari because we know th that she has a soft spot. Also, after they leave the town, they do a lot more, like, funny slice of life moments. We see Denkin eating with the, like, the little girl. <laughs> I guess she's, like, his adopted granddaughter now. Stark realizes that Denkin's a big deal. He's, like, a noble, like, court magician. <laughs> he kind of says how his magic was used to, like, kind of control people and, like, cause wars. But then Free Run kind of taught him the beauty of magic, how fun it could be. Like, you know, not killing people, but sparring with people and all these, like, kind of cool different spells. So, yeah, this anime wrapped up. And then finally, we do see one last glimpse of Himmel. And he gives us one more motivational friendly piece of advice so he's like i don't really say goodbye to people even though like i help them a lot so it's kind of like a cool coping mechanism where it's like if you do a quick goodbye then you're guaranteeing that you might see them later so i guess that's how he counters the sadness of things coming to an end but yeah you know it's all good and yeah with that the anime is over so sad hopefully there's a season two but i mean just not much to say you know like it's a good anime what am i gonna say good anime is good everyone knows that it's good like maybe some people think it's boring but overall yeah just like high quality i think if the show did not have like this level of quality it might be like 
you know, a bit more underwhelming. But yeah, Madhouse did free run justice. Like we had 28 episodes. So they fit the whole kind of first class magic exam. There was no rushing. The pacing was perfect. Love the character interactions. I guess one thing that's really goofy with the story is that every character is basically like a robot. They basically have no reaction. <laughs> they kind of go with the flow. They accept everything. There's not really too many arguments. They just have like simple conversations. Obviously, there's like deep emotional things happening in these conversations. But a lot of the time, it was just funny seeing nobody show like any type of emotion. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's like the typical environment here, especially when you're with an elf, because I guess they're always monotonous and it's like a time of peace. So no one's really pressed trying to fight each other. I love how this anime kind of has a theme about like not really mental illness, but everyone seems to have like some type of mental struggle. Either free rent, she can't really relate to humans. She's a bit empathetic. Burn being kind of like shy and awkward. Zerk was a bit scared at the beginning, but now he's kind of like a giga chat helping everybody. And then, you know, can't really say much about Ubel. She's psychotic in her own way. I hope I didn't spoil anything for you, but yeah, this anime's great. So that's it for free run this season. Can be very sad, but yeah, all good things come to an end. Okay, so for a sign of affection, episode 12, this is the finale. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. Like I could really skip this, but yeah, I basically didn't like it because it kind of ends with, you know, the main girl, Yuki. She's in a relationship with the main dude, Itsuomi. He's, he's literally the Rizzler. His character type bothers me a lot, but I know this is like a classic shoujo romance trope. The main dude is like a bit over aggressive, a bit stalkerish. So yeah, like he keeps flirting with her and everything to go on a date. At the end, Yuki gets a passport and she's like, yeah, I want to kind of explore the world with you. Because, yeah, I mean, Itsuomi also gives his motivation on, like, why he wants to travel so much. It, it literally is the most generic shit ever. He's like, oh, I love learning new cultures, and I love kind of spreading around that knowledge. Like, literally, that's the most cookie-cutter answer he could have gave. So, yeah, these characters aren't really deep at all. They're just, you know, whatever. But, I mean, my main problem is that the main dude is way too manipulative. I had some kind of fan fiction in my head where the girl will obviously go out with him, but maybe she'll see how much of a himbo he really is. And it'll just be, like, her first love, and then maybe she'll move on to the a childhood friend or someone else that, that's what i was hoping where the anime was gonna go i mean it could but yeah basically the main girl like she's super cute i didn't really like how everyone kind of treated her as a pet besides maybe her best friend like the main dude literally patting her on the head at all times kind of grabbing her hands it was just like really cringe but it's like i can't really complain because yuki is down like i did like the background characters i thought their romances were kind of like you know cute so yeah i would say if you do like romance then you know this anime is probably for you but if you're just like kind of like a stranger i feel like you will not like this one so yeah that's my quick opinion on sign of affection i don't even know why i'm talking about it but yeah i guess like every season just like a romance show that kind of like gets me a bit mad i think before this last season the anime that got me mad as well was the uh inexperience you inexperience me anime but overall besides that yeah it's a cute show this season with like some really dumb one-dimensional characters so yeah that's it okay so for the apothecary diaries episode 24 this is the finale what a beautiful show love this anime love like both halves of it so yeah like the openings were both fire everything the story was like so compelling and nice and it wasn't really too super complicated either just like you know Mao doing things solving cases all these characters have like you know legit motivations like either they have like some issues with their family they have some like murder plot line going on there's like a lot of stuff but yeah Mao Mao's in the middle of it all so yeah here uh, we, we saw her beat Lakan last episode she kind of got him drunk and then he passed out so then now he has to kind of buy a girl from the Vertigus house so it could be any girl but no he realizes that Mau Mau kind of showed him like a symbol. It's like the blue rose that withered. And it's symbolism. <laughs> it's kind of cheesy, but it's implying that even though something withered, the beauty is still there. So he realizes that Mau Mau's mom was here. She had like chlamydia. She's sick. Her mind is like a bit fucked, but yeah, he, he buys her. So I mean, kind of like a wholesome wrap up. Like he regretted kind of abandoning her, but it was kind of too late for both of them. But now yeah, Mau Mau kind of reunites them. And then yeah, she gets her family back together. But she obviously still doesn't like Lakan. She doesn't want to call him her dad. But I mean, she still means well. She wants him to kind of wrap up his story, be happy. There's a lot more plot threads being like set up. Like we know, like the last concubine, her dad seems to have like some ulterior motive. We see Mau Mau kind of hanging out with Jinshi, explaining everything. Thing. Finally, Mama kind of climbs up on the walls, wears like a cool dress, and is like dancing. It's super cute. And then Jinshi also kind of shows up, kind of scares Mama. She almost falls off and dies, but then he grabs her. And then, yeah, she said she was doing this because if someone gets bought out, then it's like kind of like a farewell dance you do. And then, you know, good, simple farewell. So, yeah, the anime is finished, but there was a season two confirmed. So, that's crazy. This anime was such high quality, very nice, and then Mau Mau is a character, just like very unique. Kind of reminds me of Doctor House because just everyone's kind of dumb, not being able to see all these like details, but Mau Mau picks it up instantly. So yeah, she just like solves all these cases. It's very cool. I thought maybe one or two episodes were a bit boring this core, 
where like Mamma was kind of solving random cases, like the blacksmith dude who kind of like left the will, all those other things that didn't really seem to matter too much. So yeah, that kind of underground murder plot line against Jinshi is still open ended. But yeah, besides that, nothing else really much to complain about. Like not really any nitpicks. Yeah, like this anime is just great. I had fun watching it. All right, so for Undead Unlock episode twenty four, yes, this anime is finished. What a good finale! I love this show. It did have some issues, mainly like I, I, the recaps were a bit painful. It didn't really matter too much for me because you can just like you know fast forward skip three minutes of the episode are just gone plus like a minute and a half of the opening but besides that the anime was drawn very well loved the art the fight scenes were really nice either andy just like you know slashing his sword or some other dude just like jumping in using their power like they delivered so yeah didn't really have any complaints on david productions i thought the colors in this anime were also kind of beautiful and then you know like the story itself is batshit crazy it's so unique i never really thought any of this would like be a thing but yeah all these like kind of negators coming in and a world just like shifting all these new cases they have to do and then they kind of got stronger discovering andy's past all that's happening every episode was just like a new thing completely different so i was just like so down every week i love fuko and andy's relationship hopefully things work out hopefully they save the world i, I mean i bet they do like the the manga is still ongoing so i'm definitely gonna read it after this this anime does have some lighthearted moments oh yeah one thing about this show though yeah all the backstories are so sad uh this one in specific because we got rip's backstory in this finale which i didn't talk about but he was kind of a little kid someone reverted him to kind of heal his wounds but we saw ano un kind of like drew a device that made him back into like normal size which kind of like deleted her lifespan so she kind of died or maybe he's still alive because i think the persona died but i think the real body is still like invisible he's still there i don't know man maybe they both died but yeah basically rip is back to normal but, but we saw how he got his power on repair basically he was a doctor and then he performed surgery on this girl that he liked and then that's when he got his power so when he was like cutting her up and shit she just like bled out and died so yeah he just murdered his girl and then which is which is sad in and of itself but now he has no career anymore because he can't do any more surgeries or else he's going to kill people so he can't even like so he can't even live his life so yeah he wants to be a villain he wants to kind of reset the universe so yeah it was cool getting his backstory like i, I feel like this is a pattern everyone wanted to get their power to either kill someone close to them so yeah you can't really have anything nice in this world okay so for solo leveling episode 11 one more episode till the finale but yeah this show bro they, they brought their best animation on this episode which was nice although the story is dumb and goofy i mean not really the story but the main character I, anytime i see jinwoo doing something trying to think trying to plan out it's just so bad he cannot he, he's not a real gamer that's all i'm trying to say but basically he does his job change quest this episode so he kind of like drives off somewhere and then he goes into like this job change dungeon so yeah i mean apparently it's a big deal it's kind of like this whole like dark souls castle so then he's like fighting different types of enemies they're kind of like armored knights wizards assassins so yeah they're just like all on his ass with different types of weaknesses he can't really like stab them with his dagger because they have like tough armor so basically he kind of just like brute forces off screen them after dodging a lot of their attacks it's really funny but he's leveling up he's getting a lot more skills and he's like putting on armor so yeah he has like more defense so i guess that's good but yeah like the main problem he has here is that the final boss of this uh job change dungeon is this big red armor dude he's really cool like i, I love this design because you know dark souls but yeah th apparently this dude is on another level his name is agris the blood red so yeah just like this red knight kind of looking like malekith from elden ring just like has sleek red armor and he's like super fast and then his helmet has like this big giant like kind of feather hair on it like this dude is insane i mean the problem is jinwoo's reaction because his reaction to every enemy is like oh this dude is the hardest person i ever fought oh this move would have killed me if i didn't do this <laughs> so it's just like so repetitive and annoying hearing Jinwoo's inner monologue and then also when every enemy has armor that he can't penetrate do you know what he does he stabs it in the eye he did this with the spider as well he stabs this red knight guy in the eye because he couldn't like penetrate his armor i was like bro can you do something more original so yeah i did have a lot of complaints but yeah overall the animation can't really complain about that like this animation was insanely good seeing like the knight kind of blitz Jinwoo but then seeing Jinwoo kind of knock back grab the sword as he was about to go for a finishing move and like stab him back and then like Jinwoo started started stabbing him in the throat and everything and then like and then the kind of animation turned into like you know shading scribbles that was just like rapid fire moving and then like just shows him like kind of stabbing him on a wall it was so sick so yeah jinwoo does beat this guy after stabbing him with his dagger and he does get a lot of like cool shit he has like this s rank helmet he has this new skill called ruler's hand which you didn't really see and then besides that i guess the job change quest is over but no it's not because there's like a part two where once you kill the boss you have to survive as long as possible so it's kind of like an infinite wave 
wave type of thing. So yeah, he does get overwhelmed by a lot of like kind of trash mobs. So after five minutes of trying to fight off like endless waves, he's like, oh, I'm going to teleport out of here. I have this teleportation stone. Again, bro, this why is this guy so dumb? This is the second time they do it. He drops the stone. Someone punches him in the arm, he drops it. He doesn't drop his weapons ever, but he drops the stone, really. But basically, yeah, the episode ends there on a cliffhanger. Jinwoo is injured. All these dudes are on his ass. What is he gonna do? I mean... Next episode is called Arise. If you know anything about solo leveling, you probably heard the Arise, like the moment. They, they kind of saved it for the last episode. So next time we're going to see some good shit, probably. I mean, I did have a lot of complaints on Jinwoo as a character. Like, I just hate how stupid he is. He even admits this episode. Yeah, I don't have enough intelligence to fight this guy. But besides that, the story is pretty decent for like a, you know, overpowered power fantasy thing. Because we see like a lot of characters doing things. Like, there's like a lot of setup. We got S rank hunters. We got people killing each other. Other. they got like people trying to like expand their business get more money so I, I really like that i guess my main problem is jinwoo because I, I like how overpowered he is i like how he's getting stronger but i just like hate how stupid they're kind of making him after entering new dungeons it feels like he hasn't really learned anything his number just went up he got a bit stronger he just like does the same thing over and over and i mean i guess it'll work okay so for chain soldier episode 12 this is the finale but before we talk about the show season two confirmed ain't no way I, I like this anime though. I know a lot of people had complaints. I I, I agree. Like a lot of the shit was low quality. I, I thought the CGI was fine. The CGI didn't bother me, but I thought like yeah, the colors and stuff. So it's kind of like a mixed bag. But I thought the show was like good. Like the action scenes were fine. Like obviously they could have been better. But that's asking for a lot. I thought they conveyed everything pretty well. I mean you know read the manga because the manga has insanely good action. Has like really good fan service moments. I think a lot of people did complain about the fan service as well though. They were like they censored it. They rushed the scenes. I I'm still fine because you can read the manga. Manga. I thought like, what we had here was hot throughout the season Kyoka just like you know doing feet things rubbing Yuki's face hugging him uh, we saw titties they were there so I'm not really complaining about this anime like obviously it could have been done better but what we had was still entertaining I thought like this was one of my favorite animes this season even with the kind of like mid quality we had but basically this episode Yuki and Kyoka kind of team up they beat the one horn dude so that's cool we see Yuki kind of, you know, powering up, doing the shonen thing. Oh, I want to be the hero. <laughs> and then, yeah, Kyoka's also helping him. She's so badass, you know, swinging the sword around. They accomplish their goal. And then all the other kind of, like, gods that showed up, they run away. And they're like, yeah, I'll see you later. They kind of took two of Yuki's sister's friends. So, I mean, that's kind of sad. It seems like they died. But basically, the sister does join them. But then she's like, I can't really live with you because I can't really trust you. So, like, I I'll go to a different village. But they're basically kind of like allies as of now. So I guess that's cool. And then we get more new like villains established that we'll probably see in the future. And we do get a reward. So yeah, that's all. That's what it's all about. I thought this reward was a bit underwhelming though. Because, you know, this is the finale. You would think for like an etchy show, like the finale, like fan service scene would be peak. It would be like, you know, something you would rewatch over and over. This one, they just like sleep in bed together, which is okay. It was kind of wholesome. As they're trying to sleep, like Yuki was a bit too excited. So Kyoka does like wrestling moves on him, like puts him in the Boston Crab and then chokes him out. So I thought that was like really funny. Oh, uh, we also see Tenka. She's like still thirsty as fuck. So she's just like teleporting into Yuki's room every morning trying to like get him. All the other girls are still in the dorm. So Nay, she's really cute. She's like, you know, handling things. We see Shushu. She's like still madly in love with Yuki, but she's not really compatible with him so she does get a bit jealous sometimes and then himari is also trying to train with yuki as well so a pretty solid finale we see like where everything's kind of headed so yeah again i really love this anime but it definitely had like a lot of wasted potential if i say this about like any other anime adaptation the source material is still there so read chain soldier if you like the anime if you were disappointed on the anime you'll read the manga <laughs> all right and after a mashal season 2 episode 11 uh, what a crazy episode. They kind of had a cool hyped up moment where MASH, they put like the music, the serious Steel song, and then him just like throwing this like giant zombie monster away. It, it was really cool. But all his like classmates are cheering for him. I thought overall though, a lot of the past episodes were super boring. All these fight scenes seem like filler, like it's so skippable. I was also disappointed because when MASH faced off with Innocent Zero in the beginning of this episode, he kind of saved the headmaster guy. The dude just like teleports away. He's like, peace. It's not, it's not time for our fight yet. <laughs> I was so let down. I was like, bro, there were no fights this season that really stood out. Like, this whole season two of Mashal was a bit boring. But, I mean, like, the opening banged, so that's one thing you could say for it. But besides that, you know, Mash doesn't fight with Innocent Zero, but Innocent Zero, as he leaves, he kind of 
summons this like giant like zombie monster that's made of the bodies of all the other zombies and it starts like attacking the whole stadium and then it looks like this monster has like a magic barrier so yeah no spells can stop it so yeah mash who doesn't really care about magic just like pulls on this chain runs and like catches it and then looks, looks like playing tug of war with it all the students are hyped up now because they're like oh that's mash he doesn't have magic shouldn't we hate him but now that he's saving their life they're kind of like cheering for him it's like the kind of Moomin Rider against Deep Sea King type of fight where there's like a whole crowd of onlookers just like cheering on the hero. It's funny because like Finn is telling Mash, you can do it. So it wasn't Lemon cheering him on. It was Finn that kind of gave him the last bit of strength to kind of pull up this monster, like swing it around by its chain. It's so, it's so big. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he just like eats it while the epic music was playing. So I mean, yeah, that that's, that's, that's probably the highlight of the season, I think. Yeah, overall, like I said, none of the fights here were like that interesting. But I mean, this anime is cool. It does have its funny moments and we'll see what's going to happen next week as we get the finale. Okay, so for Delicious in a Dungeon episode 12, what a great episode. We saved Fallen. We did it. That's all I wanted. I love how she was built up so much. She was just like a positive character. Everybody loved her, and the fact that we saved her was so good. Although it was a bit desperate because, yeah, we saw like her body's just like a skeleton. It's basically kind of impossible to rescue her right now unless, like, you know, some, some cheat magic. <laughs> so, yeah, Marcel has dark magic. So they kind of have a spell to be able to resurrect her. But first, they need to sort her bones out because they have to kind of like get her body like kind of perfectly situated. And then they have to like separate all the other kind of bones that the dragon like swallowed up. So yeah, there's kind of like a whole puzzle piece. We see uh, her and Lyos kind of sorting everything out. And then yeah, they get Fallen Skeleton there. And then yeah, for Marcel's spell to work, she draws like this kind of magic circle. Uses dark magic to kind of use some of the dragon meat. Imbue that into Fallen. And now uh, yeah, Fallen is kind of back to normal after Marcel uses like all our mana. So that's honestly so sick. Fallen gets resurrected. I'm so happy. Everyone else like kind of loves her in the party. She's like covered in blood and everything, so she takes a bath. But yeah, we see that she's stronger. Her mana just instantly gets restored. Maybe like she has dragon powers inside of her. But yeah, she's just like, you know, super positive, a bit confused. But yeah, she's just like back to normal. So yeah, I guess we'll have some more happy fun times as we kind of exit the dungeon. Wishful thinking because we still have like the other half of this anime left. But yeah, basically after they kind of rescued Fallen, they do have to eat the dragon. Okay, we can't miss out on that juicy dragon meat so they kind of like roast up the meat they like kind of cook inside of the dragon and yeah they have dragon steaks they have pizza with dragon meat on it it's so cool so yeah i loved it every episode we're eating some new monster and then you know fallen is super down as well she loves eating this dungeon food it looks like future episodes might have more depth to them because we have another member of the party so fallen might do more things fight more people like she can defeat all these spirits and stuff so i'm kind of hoping to see what fallen adds to the anime also, we see there's a dark elf that comes through that sees, like, their magic circle. So this dark elf looks like it's trying to hunt them down or something. So I guess new villain coming through. So yeah, I guess we'll see what's going to happen. But yeah, Trigger's working on this anime. It's so fun. It's so nice. One of my favorite consistent shows this season. Okay, so for Ashura, episode 12, this is the finale. This anime does have a season 2 confirmed, so that's cool. But yeah, if, if you haven't seen this anime, I haven't talked about it too much. But I mean, I, I kind of loved it. It's kind of like a small underrated show this season. It, it's a it's really cool. But then watching it early on felt a bit like jarring because the story seemed to go all over the place. Like we just introduce characters out of nowhere, no context. And then finally, after the first half, they start fighting. So yeah, this is kind of like a battle royal survival type of anime where we get like these like kind of strong ass people. They're called Shuras. And basically in this world, the demon lord died similar to Free Run, I guess. But nobody knows who the hero is. So let's have them kind of face off in a tournament. They all try to kill each other, and a winner becomes the hero. So they solve two problems. They get rid of all these, like, overpowered people that can just, like, destroy cities. And then one of them can be the hero to give people, like, hope. So, yeah, that's the concept. But, yeah, basically, when you watch the anime episode by episode, it's super unique, like, the way they do the storytelling. Because we just get introduced to characters out of nowhere. Like, we have no idea where they're going, what they're doing. But, yeah, we get their backstories, basically. And they're all kind of, like, wacky. There's, like, human, like, isekai sword characters. There's, like, magic tree men. There's like elves, there's like the spider waifu. So yeah, a lot of like cool, crazy people. They're all really strong, just like, you know, destroying cities and shit. And then we realize like in the city, there's like this war that's happening. So all the sheroes kind of fight each other in this war. While there's like all these refugees just like trying to survive. So yeah, that's what happens in this last episode. Yeah, we see a lot of them died, but yeah, some of them are still alive. And then yeah, they're talking about a season two because yeah, now this tournament might be official. So this first half was kind of like these sheriffs fighting each other in this proxy war. And now the real goal might be in season two where they actually fight in a sanctioned like kind of tournament arc. So yeah, that, I really loved this anime. I thought it was cool. The animation was somewhat decent. It had like cool explosive story moments. <laughs> 
And then, yeah, the fight scene's very nice. So, yeah, that's, like, my quick review of Ashura. I kind of liked it. You know, if you have no idea what this anime is, you know, maybe check it out. I think, like, something else as well is that it's, um, it's not on Crunchyroll. So, yeah, I know a lot of, like, Crunchyroll animes do get, like, very popular every season. But, yeah, this one, you have to either, I think it's on Disney Plus or Hulu. So, yeah, one or the other. But I guess if you don't want to watch Star Wars, you should watch Ashura. All right, so for gushing over Magical Girls episode twelve, we got one more episode left. But yeah, I'm really loving this series. It is it, really fun, just seeing Baser hanging out with all the girls, just like doing her thing, being the main character. So over here, she's like very drained because she turned Enormita into like a little girl. That's also like a new random crazy power that she has. They kind of like changed the way she sees people. But I mean, the problem is it takes like a lot of energy. So I guess that's a way to kind of balance her, where she can't really use that spell over and over. So now she's like super drained, but then she realizes that the Magical Girls are repairing the city they're back so vazer is like meeting over i have to see the magical girls so she kind of sees them all kind of repairing the city fixing the walls she also helps out and she sees azure is also there so then yeah azure got a lot stronger she's more confident now but yeah that's not gonna stop vazer from being a degen <laughs> So she gets super close to Azure and she's like, can I give you a massage? So yes, Baser just like gropes Azure, kind of massages her back, grabs her thighs and her ass. I was like, Azure, are you sure about this? Isn't this kind of sus? No, she's kind of paralyzed. I guess she feels like Utena's touch is like similar to Baser. She didn't really put it together, but it kind of paralyzes her. Azure just kind of ahigao faces like it, it was insane and i guess like this kind of like gets baser fired up she kind of did her magical girl harassment in street clothes so i guess it's kind of like a new fetish they got also after that they have like another segment where we see magenta she kind of fights with uh, alice the doll girl and we see that magenta also has like three little sisters so that's cute but basically they grow really big and she's fighting like this godzilla thing in the city the thing is since magenta is really big everyone can like look up in her skirt so yeah, they're all just like fighting inside of her and then she just like punches them all away because she's so embarrassed so we get two d gen scenes in this anime but yeah it's pretty wholesome all the characters are kind of like getting along they're kind of fighting with the magical girls but they're also appreciating their power so yeah nothing sinister happening besides you know sexual assault so can't really avoid that but yeah we'll see what's gonna happen okay so for Buchigiri episode 10 kind of like a cool episode we see Matsukara being edgy in his emo phase because he's possessed by Ichiya who's like the evil genie so now he wants Matsukara to kind of power up fight random people he's just picking fights on the street just like painting people up which is very out of character he's our sweet cinnamon role and now he's being corrupted he also gets some like kind of story where these honkies these genies are kind of like trying to possess your body and take over your body and kill you so origin hears this and now it's even worse he's been a useless main character but now he's like useless depressed and scared but yeah, besides that we see matakara fighting with marito the green haired dude yeah, this dude was him he's like the strongest dude but yeah matakara wants to face off against him because matakara is like beating up all his gang members so yeah this fight was like very slick everyone's just like kicking each other i thought the animation was super clean but like, basically matakara he's kind of like outmatched but then he realized he wants to be stronger so he kind of sinks with his genie as he kind of like reveals his desire so yeah, his is not to live in fear and then he has like the super powered kick now he kicks marito in like the neck area and then goddamn almost beats him it's very sad seeing matakara being so savage so yeah i mean hopefully arjun saves him i guess that's where they're going but yeah we just gotta see the anime does continue it does have cool fight scenes and i'm kind of curious where these characters are gonna go all right and after the dangers in my heart season 2 episode 12 so we got one more episode left till the finale but you know cute episode again this one is another like case of miscommunication because they, they go on kind of like a class trip together but we see that yamada she has like this audition to go to where she's gonna be like the actress on this manga so basically there's a thing where yamada is kind of acting weird during the trip and then kyotaro kind of realizes that it's because she wants her first kiss but then yamada's not really acting nervous about the kiss or maybe she is but she's talking about like missing her audition or not practicing enough for the audition because she's on this trip so kyotaro realizes that it's all his fault because yamada's going on the trip just for him so he doesn't become lonely i mean it's cute it's like mutual for both of them but yeah he kind of feels bad because he assumed it's for a kiss but she just wants to be here for him so he kind of goes downstairs to like the girl's hotel floor and then he he kind of bumps into her but then the teacher walks in so he has to kind of hide <laughs> so then yamada kind of hides him in her room that has like four or five other girls in it <laughs> So we had the episode there on a cliffhanger. So, I mean, it's kind of like goofy anime hijinks now because, you know, it was going to be a serious talk where they kind of like clear their misconceptions and it's like a wholesome romance. But here, yeah, it gets goofy. Kyotaro's in her hotel room and Yamada also doesn't know what to do. So yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. 
And that is it for the animes that I watched this week. We have one more week until the winter season is over for the most part. So yeah, gonna have a lot of exciting shows. I'm gonna have a tier list next week as well, so stay tuned. But overall, I really loved this week. Free Run was just so good. I can't believe how insanely nice this anime was. So yeah, one of the better animes I've watched like in the past few years. And besides that, a lot of these other shows were super enjoyable to watch. Apothecary Diaries was nice. Undead Unluck as well. So so yeah, it's all good. We have a lot of anime announcements this week as well. Say so, yeah, a ReZero season three is going to be this fall oshinoko is going to be this summer which is crazy i've been reading oshinoko i love the manga but i know people are starting fires uh ever since the most recent chapter no spoilers but yeah thank you for watching leave a like leave a comment and i'll see you next week